for the truck garden. As auxiliary power on the large farm. As a complete power unit on the small family size farm, where it will perform every job that necessity demands. International Harvester presents the Farm All Cup. In today's video, we're going to discuss and show you the advertising material for the early version of the Farmall Cub, uh, International Harvester. Before World War II was working on it, uh, they called it the Baby X. And so it was going to have similar features to their existing A uh, and B tractors, but it was going to be smaller. And the, the thought process was in the early 40s, there were still a bunch of really small farmers under 40 acres who still used mules and horses or oxen, and they wanted to get mechanized machinery out to those people. It was a, it was a good market, and IH wanted to seize upon it. There really wasn't any other tractors in the mid-40s that were like the Cub. The John Deere L was like one of the exceptions, and the Massey Harris Pony came out a little bit later. But as far as a small, uh, under 40 acre tractor, there wasn't anything. So Farmall came out with the Cub, and it was postponed until the close of World War II, and then they went back to work on it. Typical of, of Harvester, they, they released something before they were quite ready. So the Cub came out in 47, and it didn't have hydraulic touch control. Instead, it had a manual lift lever with a big spring on it and then in 48 you could take your, your cub back and have it retroactively installed uh, with, with the touch control which is this lift system here and it's hydraulic and it runs off one lever so unlike the the super a and the farmall c that had two circuits the cub only had one so if you had things on the front and back they both went up together uh, one one thing that harvester did have is they had a way to pin up some of the attachments so if you had say a sickle mower on the front you could pin the sickle mower up and take it off the lift and still use the back lift or but you couldn't you couldn't really put a snow plow uh, or a land plow on with the mower so you still had to really shuffle attachments around international they wanted to make it what they called easily swapped out attachments so uh, you know the, the age of quick tatch and, and super fast installation and removal of, of tractor attachments hadn't dawned yet so International was pretty much a pioneer in trying to make things as simple as possible. So they had these mounting pads in different places on their tractors and used mounting bolts. And it, was, it wasn't too terrible to do it, but it was still a lot more uh, time consuming than obviously a fast hitch or a, or a three-point hitch. So in this video, we're going to talk about the, the Farmalls that came out before 1954, which is when IH updated their line with the, with the Chrome, the, the 100 series they called them. So was redesigned and uh, basically the tractor wasn't changed other than sheet metal and if you look over here you'll see this tractor was a 55 was unchanged really until 1959 so in 54 they, they changed the grill and so instead of a wire grill they came up with this and then they had the chrome lettering but uh, same tractor really uh, the fast hitch was introduced in 1954 along with the 100 series and so that was also a carryover from the Farmall C in 1953. But it was a different fast hitch. Instead of a two-point fast hitch, the Cub had a, a single prong, large prong, so that the prong size is the same as like the 300, but it's only a single, single point, so it only used one. And it's really simple to add and remove attachments with the fast hitch. And I think it was probably one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century as far as farm equipment. But unfortunately, International was about 20 years behind Ford and Ferguson, so the three-point hitch was pretty much uh, established. And John Deere actually approached, approached Harvester wanting to buy the patent for their fast hitch, and International Harvester denied them. So they pretty much were the authors of their own destruction as far as the fast hitch goes. Now, International, in 1956, they came out with a bigger engine, so to speak, and more horsepower. And that was done by increasing the RPMs. And they did that two or three times over the course of the, the Cub. And then the last ones, they had the bigger, instead of the IH carburetor on it, they put a Zenith carburetor on it. So they got 15 horsepower ultimately out of the Cub. And even though the motor was essentially the same in the, in the, the newer low boys, uh, the newer low boys were 18 horsepower. And for whatever reason, the Cub still only had 15. But anyway, uh, this video, like I said, will take place 
before 1954 when, when this version of the tractor came out. And the reason being is I have so much material that I don't want this to be a two hour video. So this will probably be broken up into like two, maybe three videos. And I hope you enjoy the video. I've got some uh, original Harvester dealership videos that were, that these videos, Harvester really did a good job of pushing the new the new material out to the to the dealerships and so the, the videos would have been promotional when they had their regional conferences uh, the dealers would have got together and, and seen this quick video on the new equipment so hope you enjoy the video and thank you for watching and look forward to more to come to meet the ever increasing need for a smaller all-purpose tractor than had ever been available Harvester gathered first-hand information from farmers themselves. Vegetable growers said they wanted a small, all-purpose tractor with special tools for planting and cultivating. The part-time farmer told us he wanted power that would be economical, fast, and do a good job. The poultry man and the small livestock raiser wanted light power to raise crops, grind feed, and do the odd jobs. Operators of medium-sized and large farms wanted a small tractor for lighter jobs to release heavier tractors for regular work. In whole sections of the country, those who till small acreage had definite need for adequate economical power. Power that must do a better job of farming if the soil were to produce a better living. And throughout the nation on the small family-sized farm, there was an urgent demand for a small all-purpose tractor a tractor that the small farmer could afford to buy and operate. The engineers were given the difficult problem of satisfying these widely varying demands, of designing a small tractor with scores of uses in all types of soil, in all sections of the country. This tractor must be low cost, economical to operate, easy to operate, and all purpose. It must have matched implements, quick change implements, special equipment. It must do every job on the small farm with carefully engineered design and with extensive tests by farmers and growers, the final product emerged. The farm all cup with selective matched equipment that makes it tailor-made for every job. There are moldboard plows and disc plows, a universal mounting frame for all forward mounted implements planters for cotton, corn, beans, and vegetables, cultivators for row crops with special multiple row equipment for beans and vegetables, a power mower, and many other tools. The sturdy cub engine incorporates time-tested features of the famous Farmall family. It develops nine and one-fourth horsepower on the belt and eight on the drawbar. And the most advanced feature, touch control, is optional. Whenever the engine is running, its positive hydraulic action raises or lowers tools or holds them at any desired level. Many thousands of these tractors are now in use throughout the nation. Let's look about the country and see this versatile tractor at work. The moldboard plow mounted on the drawbar is one of several tools for soil preparation. There's also a two-way moldboard plow for turning soil uphill on contour plowing. The disc plow that is widely used in many sections of the country. The harrow plow for lighter soil preparation and for covering a larger acreage. The middle buster, a favorite tool on southern farms. Rear mounted implements are raised and lowered by touch control through the rear rock shaft. Building beds with a disc bedder so the crop will be higher and safer from damage by excessive moisture. For preparing seed beds in most soils, the tandem disc harrow is just the right implement. This fertile black soil is well adapted to vegetables and flowers. A single section disc harrow, working soil with old tree roots and rocks. A peg tooth harrow, the most universal implement. It can cover 30 acres or more per day. In planting equipment, the runner type one row planter with correct hoppers plants cotton, corn, and practically all row crops. Also, there is a shovel type black land planter. Fertilizing equipment can be used with either. For universal use in vegetables, there are multiple row planters. Here, forward mounted equipment is planting four rows with 12 inch spacings. 
planters can be adjusted for two 22 or 24 inch rows, three 16 or 18 inch rows, or four 12 inch rows. Touch control raises and lowers the equipment with little effort. Rear mounted vegetable planters are also available. They are readily adjusted for desired spacings. The turning radius of eight and one half feet makes the cub highly maneuverable and well adapted to this type of work. Here he's traveling at three miles per hour. There is also a lower gear of two miles per hour, six miles per hour in the road gear. This might be any farmer quickly changing from one operation to another at any time of day. One forward section of the single row cultivator. There's no lifting and straining. It's not necessary even to remove the nut from the bolt. The draw bar is removed by loosening two bolts on each side. A rear section of the cultivator is just as easily placed and tightened. The entire rear section is quickly assembled. Width of the front and rear wheels is adjustable from 40 to 56 inches with the adjustable front axle. He's cultivating Easter lilies, so must be careful of every plant. Shields hold soil away from the lilies and shovels must not disturb the bulbs. In contrast, this corn needs plenty of soil around the base. Also, all the space between the rows is worked and wheel tracks are cleaned out by the rear sweeps. Cultivating tobacco, where the 20 and 3 8 inch clearance of the front axle is very important. Maneuverability of the tractor makes it profitable to cultivate small areas. Fertilizing equipment is available for the one row planter. Here it's being used with the cultivator as a combination operation on garden peas. The two row beet and bean cultivator. It may be operated on beds or in flat fields. Behind the rear wheels, sweeps or special shovels are adapted to the operation. The large commercial vegetable growers and the part-time farmers like the efficiency of the multiple row cultivator. The tractor's variable speed governor permits travel of any desired speed with perfect control. Although suspended from one bar, each cultivator is full floating and operates independently. The equipment is adjustable to match rows of the multiple row planter. Notice how thoroughly the soil is worked with the knife weeder blades in this two row operation. While a larger tractor is doing its regular work, the cub on this farm is doing the complete job of making hay. The four and one half foot mower is a simple low cost machine driven by a V-belt from the power takeoff. This versatile tractor can rake as much as 35 acres of hay per day. And throughout this entire operation, it is leaving the big tractor free to do the big job for which it was intended. This man, who has an orchard as the hobby, uses his maneuverable cub and mower for close work about the trees. In the citrus groves, it's just right for mowing under the edges of the trees. Cutting this marsh grass certainly tells its own story. Professional men or businessmen who have homes with spacious lawns enjoy the fresh air and sunshine as they do their own mowing. Here is a practical economical method of keeping the city parkways beautiful. Hauling feed is an auxiliary job for the tractor on a ranch with Brema cattle. Maintaining and improving the fertility of the soil is a vital operation on any farm. With a belt pulley, the tractor furnishes power for grinding feed, sawing wood, and other belt jobs. Well-cut cotton stalks will disintegrate and return their organic matter to the soil. There's power to do every job that's required of a small tractor. And on any farm, no power job is too small to be efficiently performed by the cub. Its simplicity and ease of operation make it useful for every member of the family. See how the cub meets the requirements of the user. It is low cost, economical to operate, not more than three-fourths of a gallon of fuel per hour. Easy to operate and all-purpose. It has matched implements, quick change implements, special equipment. Does every job on the small farm and the smaller jobs on the large farm. Each user selects whatever tools will do his job the best. So the cub is tailor-made for every job.
The Farmall Cub is the smallest pup of the famous Farmall family, and only International Harvester builds the Farmall. Though small in size, it is extremely versatile and delivers plenty of power at the drawbar to turn a deep furrow. Forward-mounted implements are handled with ease, even though there are many tools of different design. Implements operated by power takeoff make the Farmall Cub more than a match for the horses or mules it will replace. Belt power for the feed grinder or other belt-driven equipment makes the Cub a complete unit for final crop processing. It's also the ideal auxiliary tractor to scamper about the large farm and do the odd jobs. Now let's go to the fields for actual and detailed operations. The soil is turned in symmetrical furrows as the 12-inch bottom on the floating beam plows at a uniform depth. Two types of moldboard plows are available as part of the balanced and matched implements. A left-hand plow may be matched with this right-hand plow for alternate operation to turn all furrows in one direction. It is especially adaptable for contour plowing and turning the soil uphill. The tractor will plow three and one-half acres per day in average soil. The Farmall Cubs high compression, precision-built four-cylinder engine delivers eight horsepower on the drawbar. This ventilated engine has positive pressure lubrication, an efficient cooling system, and is economical on fuel. It filters the oil and filters the air. A master control lever raises and lowers the plow and other rear and front-mounted implements. A counterbalancing spring, which neutralizes the weight of the implement, makes operation easy and quick. The furrow is always the proper width, and the desired depth is regulated by the right-hand adjustment lever, which raises or lowers the hitch point. This low-priced tractor, with the easy-to-adjust and easy-to-operate plowing units, provides the correct plow for any region or any soil. If the moldboard plow is not the one, the disc plow or the harrow plow will do the job. Any of the plows is quickly attached or detached. In stubborn soil, the disc plow is especially effective. The 26-inch heat-treated disc cuts a 10-inch furrow. Rugged construction plus wheel weights ensure that the disc will be held to its work under the toughest soil conditions. A harrow plow with two 24-inch discs that take a 15-inch cut is designed for shallow work and to cover more acreage. 